And just ahead of Montoya, Reed Sorensen and Bush's teammate Tony Stewart. What's the 18 off turn two over here? This is how he almost spun this thing out. Well, wait a minute. No, oh. there he goes. It's in the fence. And Biffle takes the lead. Well, he was he's been asking for this for the last couple of laps. I mean, he's uh, I think he got really frustrated running in behind Juan Pablo there. And watch him off turn two over here, Mike. Car gets really, really out of shape right there, steps out on him, and that allows Biffle to really close, and now he's been in the wall and turns four. Slightly. But, Darrell, you mentioned it. Look at the rotors glowing on that 18 car. Definitely some brake issues, in, in, in we're right only 40 side. laps into it. Ball fenders. It's Kyle Busch telling Steve Addington that he did get into the wall and a uh, little right side damage. Front and rear. Side. Ryan Vickers has bounced off the wall, keeps going. You know what I'd do to him? I'd bring him in and pull a plug wire off. <laughs> and Talking I'd put about it, the 18. Yeah, the 18. <laughs> and then I'd put it back on right near the end of the day. Now this is a That'd battle slow him down. third right here between Dale Earnhardt Jr. in the 88 car and Kurt Busch in the two. And while they've been racing, you see the fifth place car, of Jimmy Johnson in the 48 coming up there. How about Dale Jr., Matt? Team cars running fourth, fifth, and sixth, but they're all experiencing a little bit different in the handling department. Dale Earnhardt Jr. says his car right there off turn two is especially tight. Meanwhile, Jimmy Johnson's closing in says his car has gone to the free side. And just out of our shot is the seven-time Darlington winner, Jeff Gordon. And he says his car, which was good down in one and two, but tight off three and four, is now tight everywhere and getting tighter. And I don't think we can say enough about Jimmy Johnson, Chad Knauss, and that group because of wrecking twice yesterday, going to a backup car, and went out there and qualified third. And again, the reason that they didn't have to go to the rear of the field like some others, it happened before qualifying. Well, I like Daryl's idea because we have seen races at Darlington where a driver would call in and say, I've dropped a cylinder, and his lap times would get better. I'm not sure that'll happen on this fresh asphalt. No. Oh, she's got so much grip. I'm not sure that'd be the way to go now. Well, when you're two or three tenths quicker than everybody else, and you know, and you just run the wheels off the thing, you need to slow the cat down some way. He won't do it. You got to do it for him. <laughs> Craig Biffle leads Kyle Busch by eight tenths of a second. 44 laps into the Dodge Challenger 500. on Fox. NASCAR on Fox welcomes you back to Darlington County and this unique 1.36 mile oval. That has tested NASCAR's drivers since 1950. 52 laps in, and Greg Biffle, the pole sitter, who has two wins here, and has finished in the top 15 of six of his seven Darlington appearances, has a handy lead over Kyle Busch. It's now up to 2.8 seconds. Yeah, he's uh, his car is really working well. I don't see uh, any problem with it whatsoever, and I don't think it's been in the fence at all either. The right side looks clean. Doing a good job. And he just put Bill Elliott, five-time Darlington winner in that 21 car, a lap down. And while we were away, he put Tony Short and Reed Sorensen in the 41 car, a lap down. You know, I bet the way we practiced uh, down in the, you know, high 27s, low 28s. But these guys are surprised they're running 30-second laps around here. Slowed down a couple of seconds. The thing about it, we're getting within about an 8 to 10 lap window of all the guys at the front that have not been to pit road. Remember the pit window for Sunoco Race Fuel somewhere around 58 to 62, 64 laps. And this is a tough pit road to get on to, buddy. I tell you, it's dirty and sandy. You got to be careful coming down off that banking. A change at third position while we were in break. Jimmy Johnson up to third, then Kurt Busch, Dale Jr., Jeff Gordon, Kevin Harvick, and Scott Riggs having a, an outstanding run in the early going here. In eighth, ahead of Bobby Labonte and Jeff Burton. The thing about it, Scott Riggs qualified well, and this is a backup car. He's one of the guys that crashed on Thursday, and we talked about being hard to pass right now. When you look at the top 10, 
Eight of them started in the top 10, and that's where they're staying, including like Bobby Labonte in the 43, who qualified 10th, running ninth right now. That may be why about 90, 85%, I think it is, of the winners come from the top 10 here, most, most all the time. Jeff Burton, who swept both the spring and fall races in 1999, running in 10th. The Labor Day race was a fixture on the NASCAR schedule until just a couple of years ago. It was moved to California where. Here's Matt. Greg Biffle should be pitting in about four to five laps while the zero one is up the road. It's impressive besides the fact he won the pole with a new track record, Mike. The fact the side of the 16 has been clean all weekend. And Biffle will tell you the fab guys back in his now called Nationwide Series days when he ran the 60 car, they took a die cast car, beat the side of it with a hammer, then tie wrapped it to the roll bar just to remind him to save the right side of the car because he was always hanging out. And getting a Darlington strike didn't matter where he was racing, and he's learned that lesson well, and it showcased that talent here this weekend. Pit stops begin with Jeff Burton, the tenth place car. Larry, is this just a little early? N not really, Mike, okay. because I think a lot of people, because of the way the pace has changed, didn't have a great field, Dick. So I think that's why they're coming to pit road now, plus to get those four tires. Yeah, might as well, because that's cars you're not going to have to pass. And uh, the number 31 of uh, Jeff Burton said he can't drive off. The car is a bit tight, so they're going to try to fix that on this pit stop. First of the good cars to pit. Four more coming in behind him as uh, green flag pit stops begin at lap. 58. Joe Nemechek is in. A.J. Allmendinger, Michael McDowell, Brian Vickers in the pit lane. Bobby Labonte and a couple more. Dave Blaney. You know, Mike. Uh, normally, you put new tires on, Larry. That would be when the car would probably be at its best, and I I'm sure the speed will pick up some with new tires. But uh, with this tire the way it is, it takes about five or six laps to really get going good. So the most uncomfortable you're going to be is right after a pit stop. Jimmy Johnson is the first of the top five cars to pit. Let's check with Krista. The 18, Kyle Busch is in. They want to pull out that right front fender, some damage on the right side. The crew comes around to the left side to change the tires there. Kyle said tight off both turns. That is his major issue. There goes Kyle Busch. And the leader pits. Greg Biffle is in. Here's Matt. Johnson already his box a year ago. He would have had to really had a hard left into a stall, but when they redid pit road, they've already made the track bar adjustment. When they redid pit road, they changed the angle. Finally gets the lug nuts on. Long stop for Johnson. He's away. Meanwhile, the 16 of Biffle is on pit road right before the stop. He said his car was plowing tight, calling for a chassis, also air pressure adjustment. The 88 of Dale Earnhardt Jr. in his stop as well. Jr. said his car was tight. Coming around to the left side of Biffle's team. Solid stop so far for the bit. Left sides are on. 13, 14. A little hang up on the left rear. And he's away. Jr. away as well. Kurt Busch got to lead a lap. And now Travis Quapel, one of several cars with a retro paint scheme, takes over the lead. Dick Bergman. Well, Kurt Busch, Mike, has had a tough year so far. Has had a top 10 since Daytona, but he qualifies fifth. The car has gotten increasingly tight on that run. They have adjusted it for that condition. Butch having a good run tonight. And there is Quapple driving a paint scheme with a sponsor made famous by Fred Lorenzen back in the 1960s here. Now, fuel-wise, Travis Quapple can go a little bit further than some of these guys. Now, he didn't pit on the second caution, but Travis Quapple did pit on that first caution, so he can run a few laps. Further. I think it's interesting. That's the car, the paint job on there that was very dominant here in the 60s. Bill Elliott's got a car that's very dominant paint job on the 21 car that was here in the 70s. And no, oh, Dale, no, Dale Jr.'s got a car uh, that's got the retro paint job from the 80s. So we got them all, we got 10 years either, they covered. But there we almost saw with Travis Quapp right. the 28, what you were talking about, you get down on that apron, it's slick, you're carrying a lot of speed, he almost spun that thing. He did. Quapple is in for his stop, and Matt Kenseth takes over the lead. 48 had a hard time getting on pit road, too. Like I noticed him, one of those uh, cars that pitted already, watch his, how much trouble he has trying to get down on the pit lane. He's way outside the commitment line there. Gets in right at the last second. Barely got in. Barely. 
But now Matt Kenseth in the 17 car, he did pit on lap 13 under the second caution. So we know Sunoco fuel wise, he can go quite a bit further than those guys that just made the stop. Problem tire wise, he's going to be quite a bit slower right now.